Right, so in this we're going to look at how to do the stopped housing joint. It's very similar in the way that it's marked out to your through housing joint. What you'll need to do, boys, is get another piece of material and then cut it into the three parts again. So according to your drawing, those three parts are two at 110 millimetres in length and one at 80 millimetres in length, as it says on your drawing. What are, the tools? Tools? what are the tools you're going to need in order to do this? You'll need your working drawing, you're going to need your pencil, your tri-square, marking gauge, <coughs> ten and saw, your beach mallet. You're going to need one of either of these two beveled edge chisels, one that's wide enough to fit into the joint. We're going to need this special drill bit called a Forstner drill bit, and you're going to need your little cutting guides and boards. So how do I actually mark out the joint? Once I've cut these into three separate parts, I take my pencil and my steel rule, I look at my drawing, and it tells me that I need to come in 45 millimeters. So I'm going to use the end of my rule and my pencil, 45 millimeters. And then I use the width or the thickness of the joint. So I lay that onto my 45 millimeter mark, mark the other side, take my square, and I go across the two faces. And then on one edge, one edge down here, I'm going to use my tri-square up against the face of the material and draw these lines down. Again, like you can we see, we take our marking gauge, we loosen the thumb screw, distance between the stock and the spur is what we need to set to half the thickness of a material. Material is seven, oh, pardon me, this is 18 millimeters thick, so I'm gonna set my marking gauge to nine. Put the flat end of my rule up against my marking gauge and measure the distance between the stock, the big wooden part, and the spur, the little metal spike part, and I tighten that up. I put my material into the vise, and I go between dot to dot between these two edges. You can see just here, and anyone else watching can see just there. I'm going to line that in. So we set our marking gauge to 12 millimeters. Same again, distance between the stock and the spur, 12 millimeters. I take my material and I'm marking it across the face, a point that is 12 millimeters away. The last thing I need to mark is where I'm actually going to drill out the majority of the material using this funny little tool called a Forstner drill bit. Now I want that drill bit to drill and cut in between these three train track lines, as it were. I don't want to go out with that, I want to stay within that. This drill is 15 millimeters in diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna measure eight millimeters down and mark a little dot. And then I'm going to mark a line right down the middle of this as well. And all of this is on the drawing, that's 18, that's nine millimeters there, going across the face. So what I've got is a line right down the middle and then another point for drilling that's eight millimeters away from that stop mark. So I've come in 12 millimeters, then eight, then a line right down the center, and I've also marked down the edge. This is now ready for drilling. So now what you look to do is to cut out your material using the Forstner drill bit. What I do, I make sure my drill is set to zero so that it can't actually turn on. I insert the flat end into the chuck, and I tighten that by hand. I then take my chuck key, and I rotate this clockwise into each of the ports to tighten the drill bit securely. You've got to make sure the chuck key's out of there. And I put the guard onto the material. Next thing I'm doing is I'm going to set my depth and line up my pedestal. So I'll line up the little spike on the end of the drill bit with where I'm wanting to drill. So that's me lined up there, spot on. I'm just checking I'm not going to go out with any of the lines. Perfect, and I'm going to set the depth to half the thickness of the material. The material is 18 millimeters thick. I'm setting the depth stop to nine millimeters, so the drill will only go down nine millimeters. And the last thing I'm going to do is to actually clamp this in place so that it's ready for use. So I clamp down my material securely so that's not moving. My pedestal's not moving. The depth has been set. So now I've got the drill set up, and I'm going to turn this on and I'm gonna bring the drill down gradually and cut out as much of the material as I can with this. And it's often best to try and cut out as much as you can with the drill as possible. So I'm gonna get the next one lined in. And there we go, perfect. Start the drill again. 
Next one down. Push the stop there. And last one. And there we go. You're just trying to drill out as much as possible. It means you don't have as much cutting or chiselling to do. Notice I've drilled as much of it out as I possibly can. Much of it out across here. And now we'll come to cut this out. So last part of this is to now actually cut out the remaining material and to do that what I'm going to need is my bevel edge chisel, a beech mallet as well as <clears throat> a tenon saw, a G clamp and my uh, bench. If I take just now my little Stanley knife and my tri-square, what I'm wanting to do is to just mark out with a small part of my craft knife the area that I want to cut. I've marked out where I'm wanting to cut. You see in that one here? And now I'm going to clamp this to the end of our bench and get this cut out. You need two pieces of material that are the same thickness and we're going to use this little pink block to help us to cut. So I'm going to clamp my material down here. It needs to be done at the far side of your bench. It can be a little bit tricky but if you tighten it slightly by hand to start with and then get the rest of this in place, should be good. So I've tightened this in place, boys. I've now got a stop from where my saw is going to go. I take my saw and I go along this edge that I've just cut. I'm going to go along this edge as well. The pink block's there, boys, to stop the saw going too far. I want it to stop because this is a stopped housing. Okay just using the front edge of your saw to cut this and lastly to finish it off now that I've cut this out I take my bevel edge chisel two hands behind the blade remember and I take my beech mallet and I'm just going to lightly knock out the rest of this remember and keep your glasses on don't want any little chips flying out hitting me in the face two hands behind the blade as we get this cut is my stopped housing joint being cut and it'll fit nicely with my material okay, stopped housing joint mark out the last section of this joint what you're going to need is the pencil tri square steel reel tenon saw and a marking gauge start by taking your adjoining piece of material and laying it onto the joint. Take your pencil and mark onto it where the stopped part of the stopped housing is going to go. Use your tri-square and draw that line across the end grain and then down both sides of the faces. So I've drawn it across the end grain and down both sides of the faces. And the last part is to decide, well, how deep is this cut going to go? To do that, you need your steel rule. You measure the depth of your joint. The depth of this joint is half the thickness of the material. So I'm going to set my marking gauge to nine millimeters. Loosen the thumb screw on my marking gauge. Set the distance between the stock and the spur to nine millimeters. Tighten that up again. Often best done if this is laid down on a table. Face, edge, face again. Use your tri square to line that in. And you can mark out what needs to be removed. Put your material into the bench vise, checking that the lines that you're going to cut are going vertically up. Hold your saw, point your thumb and finger back and forth. Down the end grain and then across the face. And you now have your stopped housing joint complete giving a neat edge across here and round. <laughs>